well. You guys were funny in Italy without <laughs> your wives. And we have the opportunity to go to Italy again. Right now, it was like, oh, should we go for this other show? But I'm at the point in business of overwhelm that I was like, if I go to Italy, I won't come back. So I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast with Kylie Nichols. I'm Kylie, founder and CEO of the life-changing accessories brand, Nickel and Suede, and the successful style blog, One Little Mama. I made the unlikely transition from stay-at-home mom to founder and entrepreneur. It takes a lot of courage to make a change like that, but I love the growth and the confidence that's come from stepping out of my comfort zone. This is the podcast for people who want to be inspired, to be brave, to take a chance, and to change their life. I'll be sharing stories and actionable takeaways about working with your spouse, being a working mom, starting and growing a business, confidence, motivation, and more. So get ready to get inspired and to get started with Kylie Nichols. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. I'm Kylie, and you are with Kylie Nichols, and today I am with Soren. He is back to join me, and today we are excited to kind of dive into something we are not very good at, but I'm excited to kind of push us and challenge you to do the same because if you're like us, and I find most people are, you haven't done this yet either for last year. So we are, what, three weeks into the new year, and yes, we're doing something we should have done at the end of last year. So, um, Soren, welcome to the podcast. It's so nice to be with Kylie Nichols. Thanks. Um, it's been a few weeks since you've been back. What have you been doing? All sorts of things you wouldn't approve of. <laughs> Sounds pretty typical. So, if uh, you haven't, you know, been around very long, Soren and I work together, and. Soren runs around and does all kinds of things I don't approve of. <laughs> I'm the boss. And just before this podcast, I called him and I'm like, where are you? We need, we're supposed to be recording a podcast right now. And I was busy having a meeting with someone, showing the org chart to them and how you are the boss and how um, I, I'm, I'm your helper. Yeah. I'm, I'm, my dream job would be your assistant and as long as I'm running around fixing things, it takes me away from being your assistant. So the ideal thing for me would be to not have to run around, fix things anymore, and then just wait on you hand and foot. Uh huh. Yeah, that makes you sound really great. So <laughs> way to suck up to the audience. <laughs> so like yesterday, we were in job interviews. I went downstairs uh, to get you some water. Uh, and did I come back with that water? No, I came downstairs and I found my Yeti cup on the floor behind you and you were like putting together a stool for somebody. Yeah. Like, thanks for the water. And I picked up my cup and went and got it myself. One so. of our employees came to us and said, I can't put this back together. And they were coming to me and hey, I can fix that for you. Yeah. So thanks for the water. Ma but. Maybe I'll be like the guy from the Holes movie, you know, where he says, I can fix that. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> yet again, sucking up to the audience. So... <laughs> Uh, Soren's pretty great, but I guess you can, you're here. You made it to the podcast. Okay. So back to the topic at hand. What did we not do last year? So we aren't very good because we're entrepreneurs, because we're crazy busy with five kids and business and all the things. We're not very good at looking back at what we have accomplished in the past. We are always talking about what still needs to be done. Would you agree? I'm like the king of that, and you could be the queen. Yeah, I'd say that's true. Um, I'm always like the not good enough guy. Keep going, keep going, keep going. How about you? I I like to say things are good enough, but um, literally most of our conversations are like, okay, I still need to do this. What do you still need to do? What are we doing tomorrow? What's next? Yeah. Like nonstop. It never shuts off, especially right now because we – are working with a business mentor and we have homework from him and we have employees who need things from us. And so it's like the to-do list continues to multiply, multiply, multiply. And so literally from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, it's like, what's the next thing we have to do? And it's like, okay, what's after the podcast? Oh, it's chili potluck lunch. What's after that? Oh, it's a phone call. What's after that? What's after that? What's after that? So it's just never ending and it continues to get worse. So, um, but Three weeks ago, you sent me some emails that you saw other businesses doing and you really admired that were 10 things or 12 things, whatever, 10 things that they had accomplished 
in 2019. And you said, I really love this. I love that they took the time to write out the 10 things that they got done that year or the 10 things they were most proud of. So I took note of that. I said, Zorn thought that was great. I think that's great too. I want to take a minute and do that. So this episode, we're going to go through 10 things we got done, 10 things that were awesome that we accomplished in 2019 together. And I thought that'd be really interesting to share with the audience. Soren is always here to add color to those items. I could go down the list, but I thought it'd be fun to do it together. And then um, issue a challenge at the end of the episode to kind of, um, you know, push our, our audience, our listeners to do the same thing because there's a lot of value in stopping for a second and not like just jumping to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. So, so you're ready to do it? I'll uh, get the color ready. <laughs> okay. All right. So 10 things we got done, we accomplished in 2019. Okay. So the first thing we did really literally first well, thing on our first list. thing on our list, but it really was at the beginning of the year was we moved into our business into a new headquarters. And that um, was big in so many ways. It's literally a really big building. Um, we moved out of a small building into a bigger one. And we had been spent basically all of 2018 planning it. And we were we had been kind of exploding out of busting at the seams out of our other building. And so we felt like there's no way to grow. There's no way to move forward if we don't move our business out of this smaller building into something else bigger. And so you spent all of 2018 planning it and building it. So in 2019, we moved in and then we said, holy cow, what have we done? <laughs> and I feel like that sentiment is like been my whole year. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So cue the color, right? Yeah. What are, you th um, what are your thoughts about this new HQ? So this new HQ color is, um, for me, I got to be the person with every little detail location of every power outlet and every Ethernet port. Um, and so I know it super well, and it's really cool to be um, have something that you know that well. Yeah. Everything here was with my intent design for something. Um, and that along that way, I fought with you so much about uh, a variety of things yeah. that I think has come full circle. And now you like your office. At the beginning, you said, I don't want anyone planning my office. Nobody touch my office. It's true. Everything in this office came no. with my assistance. No, 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 <laughs> it did. no. Everything beautiful about this office was 100% me. <laughs> Yes. But it has really good Ethernet. That's true. That the internet's pretty good. <laughs> the layout. I, I was up here with tape measures. Oh, my and goodness. I cut pieces of cardboard out because she wouldn't let me have a designer work on the layout and a rendering. She she said no to two designers to, like, draw up what her office could look like. I really like. don't want to offend any designers who might be listening. <laughs> but I re we really struggled with putting together the HQ together. It really was. We've never built a house together, but... It was kind of like hell. Um, like, you did want to, you were like, we have to pick where every plug in this building the goes. Size of and your I was rug. like, kill me now. <laughs> yeah. Kill me now. And you're like, you have to design a desk. And I was like, just let me order something online. And yeah. you were let like, let me go to Wayfair. And you were like, let me go to Office Depot. Kill me now. No, no, you wanted like CB2 or something. Yeah, they have beautiful things. <laughs> beautiful, tiny things. Right. So Soren designed my desk and it's awesome. So we, I mean, our skills combined, it was just a lot of oil and water, a lot of friction. I mean, I think there was some, some of that oil got set on fire multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> it was, so anyways, super, super happy with how the building came together. So it's been awesome space to, to work in this year. It really is. It, it's a jaw, jaw dropper for everyone who walks in. And we worked with some incredible, like we worked with Huff, the architecture firm, and they, I mean, it wasn't just you. We worked with an awesome team and our awesome um, construction teams too mm -hmm. that really helped put the whole thing together. Yep. So um, huge accomplishment to have done it. Now filling it up, making, having, you know, having all the work to, it's, it's just, continue, it's going to help us continue to grow. So it's been a really great, cool thing. So that's number one and it's going to give us a future. So. And I get points because now other businesses... Uh, who know us 
are going to call and say, hey, where did you get your furniture? Hey, where did you get this? How did you do this? And we've had that happen on multiple fronts. And I feel like, yeah, I know stuff now. Yeah. I, I can get things done. I know who to talk to for this or that thing. Yeah, Your um, superpowers were definitely employed in putting this building together. Yeah. And we're hosting an event tonight, which we wouldn't be able to do in any other way. So it mm-hmm. feels really cool to be able to give back to the community and be like, hey, yes, we can host things. We can have people here. And we su- feel super fortunate for that. So, so that was the HQ and we left room in this HQ to be able to have a retail store because we thought, you know what, if we're gonna have an HQ, the original plan years ago when we were moving out of our basement was that we wanted to have our retail and our operations all together. That kind of got messed up whenever there was a big building collapse and it just, we now had that chance again when we were kind of resetting our work location. So number two on the list is that we planned an entire new, entirely new retail concept this year. So in January of last year, we didn't have like our new flagship store had, it wasn't even born yet. So now it is, I don't know. That was, that was confusing. So, (laughs) so number two is we planned our retail concept, which means we started working with the designers to now take the functional space that we left room for yeah. and figure out how the shopping experience is going to be. Yeah. Now that we have a, a walls and a roof, now how is it going to flow for customers and what message are we going to communicate through yeah. the, the environment? Yeah. And we love it. Yeah, we had a retail store that we started in the basement. It's funny, we always start in basements, but I love that. We had a retail store in a basement that we had thrown together in six weeks. So cute, so cozy, loved it so much. Uh, Was not repeatable, was not scalable, was not going to be taken to 10 cities across America. So we needed something that we were able to do that. And so we said, what does Nickel and Suede look like grown up? What does Nickel and Suede look like in a more mature way that still sends the message that we want us to share? So we design that and that looked like big teal curtain it looked like beautiful pink marble it looked like breezeway blocks and all the things you see in our store and so we designed that and we opened that store in october or early november Mm -hmm. and that was a huge accomplishment for 2019 so number three statement earrings so statement earrings is funny um but we have always been a statement earring company, but in 2019, we really started adding new elements to our earrings. Original, before that, we really had just been a piece of leather cut out on a hook, but in 2019, we added posts, we added resin, we added wood, we added lots more elements and shapes to really make a lot of different statements. And for me, that felt like a huge risk, like, okay, we're gonna try new things and it's gonna happen every month and it's gonna be, um, you know, how are our customers going to respond? Um, so I was really stepping out of my comfort zone as a designer to just like put new stuff out every single month, which was new, but, and it was also different. So that was new for 2019 was new statement earrings with all these different mixed in components. So, and it was super awesome because it was something. So I'll add the color. You had these ideas back at the very beginning. And we considered um, we don't want to dilute our recognizability. So we're going to stick with the teardrop shape for long enough so that everyone on the planet thinks that's nickel and suede. That's our shape. If they see a teardrop. If they see a teardrop leather earring, it started with us. So we went with that for a couple of years. After our second year, we introduced one new shape per year to kind of um, start building. Start building. Yeah. But this year, we really let it out. Yeah. And you'd been, you know, waiting for this, and it was time. We were big enough to say, "Hey, everyone knows us. Um, now yeah. we're going to let you see what we got." Yeah, yeah, and I'm really excited for this coming year because we're just going to really keep going and pushing things because the possibilities of leather are endless. But um, the year of new statement pieces was last year. That was a great new start. And they are amazing designs. Thank you. Love them. Um, number four was kind of a personal one, but Rush is our fifth boy so we have five boys and our fifth boy he had a he was born with a cleft lip and a cleft palate and he was born 
February of 2018. So last year in 2019, he had his third surgery and it was a major one. It was his biggest one. He had his palate repaired. And for us and for our business even, because we are a small business and we have employees that are close to us and it's the two of us running the business. It's a big deal when there's a big family event at our house. And so he had his palate repair in May and that was a big a big thing. So so happy with how it went, but he had his palate repaired and that meant a big surgery and um, several days in the hospital and then weeks of recovery. But it was a huge, huge thing to have that past us because he won't have any more surgeries until he's about eight or nine. So it just feels like we're so thankful to have had that done. And our team really stepped up and took care of things while we were gone. So really thankful to have that um, accomplishment and thing past us. So, and he's doing great. Mm-hmm. Number five, we made the Inc. 500 list again. Barely, almost. <laughs> so last year we, we made the Inc. 500 list at number 127. And well, in 2018. In yep. 2019, we made the list at number 529. 29. So almost on the 500. Um, but it was. And the percent of businesses that make it on the list two years in a row, I think, is less than 2%. It's really hard to sustain a growth rate like that. Uh, for extended time. Yeah. So there are businesses out there who've done it, um, but it's very, very, very few. So Yeah, and I can attest to how hard it is to grow that fast. Mm-hmm. And it feels like we're cleaning up the mess of that growth right now. Because um, when you grow, things are stretch and are messy and hard. And so if you guys hear me talk about how hard things are, or, you know, the st- stretch and the growth here on the podcast, it's because... Um, people were buying a lot of earrings really fast. And uh, so now we're kind of setting up systems in place to, to clean that up and to kind of sustain that. So so the goal for future would be to continue to be on the Inc. 5000 list. Yeah. Um, because we want to be large and stable, uh, not crazy growth and messy. Yeah. Yeah. We being, need some stability. Being at the top of that list means you're growing like this. At instead an insane of, rate. Yeah. 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 Um, number six, we added new technology. So kind of back to the earrings again, we, so we added new materials to our earrings, but we also added new technology to how we make our earrings. I don't know if technology is quite the right word. Capabilities. Capabilities. Yes. So we introduced the sunburst earring in August, which had, which was leather with that had foil stamping on it. And that earring I had had in my mind for ever, um, and it's really simple, but being able to do it in mass production wasn't so simple and being able to do it in the quality we wanted to, but um, the possibilities are endless and it just was so beautiful to be able to add that gold or silver foil to the leather. And so amazing. so excited to be able to start rolling that out. That's so my favorite earring. Looking forward to being able to do lots and lots of things with that. I just oiled, ordered some new foils yesterday that I'm really excited about that are not gold or silver. They're going to be so cool so awesome. with future leathers. Endless possibilities. Yes. So So color to that. Uh, again, this goes back to the beginning. I bought our first... Um, mini foil stamping machine. Mini foil stamping machine um, in early 2016, I think. And it literally sat in a box through the move out of our basement into the old building, uh, through the moves. It was just kicked around. And I had this box of parts, this box of ideas, this box of prototypes that I'd put together. And it just was always on the back burner uh, that we need to get back to this. We need to get back to this. And so having this new space um, and then uh, the right people came on board and our production manager and myself, we went to Italy uh, in February to try to study how we could do this at scale. And we brought that back with us and we finally got it going last fall and uh, so happy. Yeah. So it was a long time coming. Yeah. Well, and that kind of speaks to the fact that I think things can look really big on the outside or really good on the outside to a lot, for a lot of different things. But then like the truth is we've had ideas we want to kick off for a really long time and just not have the capacity to do it or not have the right people to do it. And that that's the reality at a lot of businesses or in a lot of, 
you know, ideas that you can have. It's just, it can take a lot of time to get to it. It can take tons of time to really make things happen, especially if the priority is, we have to get phone systems figured out. We have to get electrical outlets placed. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to be able to kind of take ideas and actually get them to fruition once they become the priority. So, and that kind of speaks to the next thing. Number seven is that we did a lot of traveling last year, some for the business, some for fun, but Italy was one of them. So looking for new, for new, new technology, you guys went to Italy, you and our production manager went to Italy. We traveled for photo shoots last year, which was fun and a great way to add some color to our marketing. We went to Charleston, um, Derek, our producer he's here and uh he went we went to charleston we went to miami um the Sorny and i went to new york for other leather sourcing and things um, i went to san diego for some personal development and we went to arizona for the ink conference and then we also went to dallas and that was because we were scouting for another retail location so um, that's something that we are close to getting done this year. We were hoping to get done last year, but opening a new location in Dallas is huge. And that's part of our retail program, but we found a location in Dallas and signed a lease and we have that almost built out. So that's another, I think, accomplishment to wrap into that is that we're opening a nickel and suede store in Dallas and it's gonna happen in the next four to six weeks. Um, I wish I could put that on the list of checked off for last year, right. but reality is you can't always check things off in one year. Sometimes yeah. it's a rolling year, so. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so what color can I add to that? Um, while I was in Italy, my so while Ryan and I weren't working and hustling around, we spent the rest of our time shopping for our wives. It's so nice of you. Specifically perfume because <laughs> they just you that know cover a, you in perfume that, when you walk I'm, into I any store. I am actually wearing the perfume you bought yes. me today. So the color I was going to add was about the perfume that I bought you that you're not wearing. It was hideous. <laughs> it was the worst. I got swindled by this Italian saleswoman who said that when a man wears this, I follow him. Oh yeah, that's the perfume. That's the cologne you I, I, bought for I bought yourself. that for myself. Yeah, it's and horrible. You hate it. And I bought the girl version for you. It was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. So when we, um, so but they're very nice. They were very expensive. They were in these nice bottles. They're actually at Nordstrom right now. So that's <laughs> hilarious. Just a side note. I just saw them on their website. Interesting. They told me it was an Italian exclusive that no they never exported it. Yeah. Well. Um, so we have some Italian friends, and when they stayed with us this summer, I said, "Oh, I'll show them this Italian set that they'll probably uh, know to appreciate Validate instead you. of instead of scoff at." And both of them said, "Ooh, that smells like old every lady. old lady <laughs> and every old man in Italy." <laughs> Because that's exactly what it was. It was yeah. the most popular perfume in Italy for old people. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, you bought me some better stuff. Yeah, your first Golden Goose. That was me, right? No, well, you got me a Gucci bag, but oh. you got me a different cologne that, or a perfume that was better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did well. You guys were funny in Italy without <laughs> your wives. And we have the opportunity to go to Italy again. Right now, it was like, oh, should we go for this other show? But I'm at the point in business of overwhelm that I was like, if I go to Italy, I won't come back. So I can't go. <laughs> like, if I leave and go to Italy, no one will ever see me again. So it's really not a good idea <laughs> yeah. at the moment. So don't let me get on a plane. Send me a postcard from Cinque Terre. Right. I'd just be like, good luck, everyone. I hope it goes okay over there. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, uh, number eight on the list is I started a podcast last year and you have been a guest a few times. So I'll loop you in on that a little bit. You've been really supportive of the podcast, so you can, you can kind of own the accomplishment. It's more me and Derek, but, uh, <laughs> yes, you kicked me out of the podcast. If I remember the first, the first few episodes I was on, it was kind of a, like a possibility that you were going to be a co-host. And then it was like, Meh, I don't know. Because after our first couple episodes, we saw that... Uh, you talk way too much. Yes. <laughs> and you're just way better to look at. I think everybody enjoys the color, though, so you'll probably... 
you had way more color than I do. So the podcast, though, has been a great experience. And it's really hard for me to put a lot any time to it. But my goal is just to keep it consistent. And then it's going to get better as it goes on. So yeah, there's a lot of learning early on, even just uploading the podcast. Oh, my goodness. So a much. Bit and, yeah. And I'm like really proud that we did it. Yeah. Like the fact that it's going and I keep seeing articles and things that are reinforcing that like podcasts are where growth is and that that that's the right direction to have gone. Like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad we started it, especially with how overwhelmed I am right now. I would never feel confident starting it now. So good thing we dove in and started it when we did because there's no, t- wouldn't want to do it now. So at least now all I have to do is try to maintain. So glad we started the podcast. Hopefully everybody who's listening is too. And they're not like, that was a really <laughs> dumb story about Cologne. Um, okay. And then number nine, we hired a business advisor slash mentor last year at the end of the year. Maybe we wish we would have done that a year earlier, but three years earlier to be precise. Well, he was in our living room. Uh, and we said, don't admit I don't, to this. I don't really have enough of a business for you to help with. That's what we told him. That's what we told him. Yeah. And he said, well, what are your goals? Uh, what's your growth goals? And, and um, three years later, I reached back out to him and I said, hey, I think we could use your help now. And he says, well, I just checked you out and it looks like you reached all your goals. And I was like, yeah, you're hired. <laughs> like For you to have been able to pull that information he out. He remembered your he goals. He remembered yeah. better than we did. What our goals were. What our goals were and the conversation we had at that time. And he's been amazing. Yeah. It's been the best thing we could have done. To, uh, it was kind of at the four, in fourth quarter last year. And uh, it has been kicking our butts to have hired him. <laughs> um, I'll probably record another podcast about how exhausted I am because we hired him. But it's really the only <laughs> so thing good. that's teaching us what we didn't know. Yeah. So super um, excited about that's where all of our personal growth is coming from right now. And um, that's what's going to really make the difference in 2020. So totally. really grateful we did that. And would, if you can find the right advisor and mentor that you feel like is the best fit for you and you and your business or you and your next venture, because it doesn't even have to be business. Like what's the thing that you're going after? Um, somebody that can be a mentor for you. So important. So I will speak to that with word of advice get in front of the needs that don't show up yet. We didn't hire an advisor earlier because we felt like the needs aren't there. I have other needs that are more pressing. I don't need a weekly phone call with somebody to see how I'm doing. I need to get work done. Um, And had we gotten in front of some of the needs that would be coming with growth, we'd be in a much better spot right now. So... Um, if you feel like you're not ready or you should wait, I would go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, I literally feel like a five-year-old and he's a 40-year-old who knows everything. Like, yeah. I will do everything he says. It's, it's so important. That's good. All right. And then number 10, the cutest thing on our list is we got a puppy in 2019. And for the record, whose idea was uh, the puppy? A hundred percent you. But who takes care of the puppy? hundred percent me. <laughs> but I feel like I got the puppy for you and the boys. Mm. So, and I feel like I've taken care. Anyways, the puppy has been an awesome addition. You bought the puppy clothes, toys, all kinds of little things around the house. <laughs> and uh, he chews my ankles off. Yeah. yeah. Well... We, got, we did happen to get a puppy for basically Christmas, and he's great. He's been an awesome addition to the family. So we got a Bernadoodle puppy, and we're so excited to have him be part of the family. He's been great for the kids and kind of adding responsibilities to them. But what I will not do is get up in the middle of the night and take him outside <laughs> because it's outside. And with kids, I would get up in the middle of the night with them because they didn't need to go outside when it's 20 degrees. So yeah. that's kind of the like distinguishing line there. Mm-hmm. So thanks for doing that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So that's the 10 things we did in 2019. I feel like it was an awesome year. And I'm like, 
really happy now. So totally great and ready to conquer 2020. So um, the reason that I wanted to kind of go through that and is I think it's just fun to go through those accomplishments. I feel like it kind of gets your endorphins going and be like, oh yeah, we're awesome. We can do things. And those, those are not small things. A lot of those things were, like we said, either they were coming for a long time. Like we didn't just start working on them January 1, 2019. So they were like, they were building up. We had been working on them for a long time. Or we worked our tails off, like the retail concept. We did start working on that in like February and we got it done. So um, we can really pat ourselves on the back and I am proud of us for that. So I think for listeners, I think there's a lot of value in challenging you guys to do the same thing. And because that like sets you up to say, okay, I can do hard things in 2020. So I was going to suggest ways to think about, okay, how do I go about making my list for this coming, like, or for last year? How do I go about looking back? Uh, Derek and I were talking about his list. And he said that, Derek, you said you were looking at footage yesterday from last year. Yeah. I, I even went through all the nickel and suede footage, other clients that I've worked with. And it was cool seeing the growth that I've had even skill-wise on video. Yeah. And it's gotten better. So... Uh, yeah, with me, I think it was easier that I can go back on dates of videos posted. Okay. Whereas some people may have to, you know, just tap into your own brain. Okay. Yeah. So you were able to look back through like old computer files, like, mm-hmm. so your work is cataloged. So if you're the kind of person who catalogs your work or like photos or blog posts or, um, receipts, like, <laughs> receipts, things on your computer, um, it just really depends on what your industry is or who you are, what your goals are. So I was thinking, you know, you could go back through photos on your phone. Apple phones have that great feature where you can look back like month by month. That was kind of like glimpse of, glimpse, like glimpse, do a quick run through. You can look back through your Facebook if you're somebody who posts there or Instagram. Just scroll back quickly. And then I have mentioned on previous episodes looking back at like your list of goals from the year before and checking back and saying, hey, how did I do? But that can kind of like, I'd say, spark your mind. I went back month by month in my head. I said, okay, what did I do in January? Also, if you're somebody who keeps a planner or you can look back through your calendar in your phone and say what happened and that could kind of spark your mind and say, what what was I doing? Um, Traveling can help spark your mind. So I would say like, okay, what did I do in January, February, March? And then that could probably help you get a good list going. And then maybe rank them and be like, what was the biggest thing I got done last year? What was the next thing, next thing, next thing? This was kind of, you know, all over the place. We didn't rank them by like the most hugest accomplishment. That was great grammar. Hugest accomplishment that I've ever, you know, that I accomplished in 2019. But I would say just find a way that works for you and then tack it up and then maybe put that next to your goals for this coming year. And then one other suggestion I had for setting goals, because I think we should still be kind of in like, oh, soft goal setting mode for the year, because I think we should kind of always be working on goals and and um, moving you know, looking at the months and years ahead and kind of rearranging goals and saying, hey, did I accomplish this? Hey, what do I want to work on next? And one of my employees, she said that the way she sets her goals is she looks at one and she kind of puts them in quadrants. And so one is for a me goal, one is a career goal, family goal, and then world or community. And those quadrants kind of help her separate out goals. And so you could probably look at accomplishments the same way and say, hey, did, what did I accomplish for me? What did I accomplish in my career? What did my family accomplish? And what did we accomplish in the community? And those could be another way that you kind of separate out and feel like you got something done, feel like you made a difference. And if you are part of the with Kylie Nichols community or you're part of the Nickel and Zoid community, like um, I really believe in making a difference. I really believe in changing your life. And so if we're gonna be doing that, we need to know that we did it and we need to have evidence of it written down. So, sorry, Soren, I just kind of started monologuing without you. <laughs> um, 
Soren's not somebody to write things down like this, but uh, <laughs> you did make a list of goals. But I, anyways, I think this would be good even for our family. But like, hey, what did our we did? This was for work, but like, what did our family accomplish last year? What did we do for our community? So, anyways, um, lots of thoughts, lots of things, but. Um, Hopefully this exercise helped and was interesting, helped you get to know us better. But so 10 things we did in 2019. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts and maybe ways that you think back about your year and maybe what your biggest accomplishment was. So leave a, leave a comment on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, still would love for you guys to leave reviews and rate. That really helps the podcast um, be seen and get new listeners. And we will see you back here next week. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening today to With Kylie Nichols. Stay tuned next week for another episode. And if you can't wait until then, you can find me at onelittlemama.com, M-O-M-M-A, for beauty, our family, style tips, and more. And you can find my business at nicholandsuede.com with the and spelled out. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.